everyone, it's Monica, and welcome to TaylorMade Cards for You. Well, today we're going to do something really fun and close to my heart. I'm going to be showing you how to create a keepsake card. Now, a keepsake card is something that doesn't get put away typically. It's something that may be displayed on a desk um, or on a mantle, and it's usually uh, a photo. Now, I know that a lot of us get some of these photos uh, in today's uh, times where they're colored and you print them off of the computer, um, but we didn't invent this. This actually has been going on for a very long time. And I was rummaging through some of my old family photos and I found some of these great uh, Christmas photos. And I wanted to show you how I create keepsake cards. Now, this typically will work with black and white cards. So those are the cards you're gonna wanna rummage through. Now there's a few ways that you can create keepsake cards. Now the first way is to use one of these cabinet cards um, and you uh, want to always scan your images. You don't ever want to use your originals. Um, and then once you scan them, um, then you can put them in these little cabinet cards and then you can attach them to cards. So that way someone doesn't necessarily have to keep the whole Christmas card. They can just uh, remove the cabinet card and now it becomes a little keepsake. And these little cabinet cards are great. They're really cute. They're from Tim Holtz and they're good quality. Um, the photo fits in there real nicely. I think the, the size is three and a half by four and a half. Uh, it's pretty close. And then I use this die uh, from Dynamics to go ahead and attach it. Now the die that I'm using is for a gift card, but it works great for these cabinet cards as well. You really want to just create some slots so you can insert your cabinet card and have it be able to remove easily. You don't want to necessarily tape it down um, to the card because then you're going to have to pull it off the card and then you use, lose that uh, great vintage uh, writing on the back. Now another way that you can create a keepsake card is to use some vintage um, uh, designs like this one right here and Tim Holtz came out with a great stamp this year um, which has a music sheet as well as a vintage advertising design and it would work great for this um, and then I also created my own cabinet cards to use um, and create some nice keepsake cards so I'm going to be showing you three cards today I'm going to be showing you how to create the uh, cabinet card where you can remove it from the card I'm going to show you how to create your own frame and then finally we're going to create a card using those cabinet cards so let's go ahead and get started okay so the first card that we're going to create is the one where you're going to go ahead and create your own frame now I have these really cute principles in my shop um, but it will also work that with that new Tim Holtz stamp uh, because I did look at the measurements and I tried to create my uh, images to match the measurements so um, that way you can go either way. So once you print out your, uh, your images, you're going to want to go ahead and trim it down with your trimmer. And then you're going to want to take an oval uh, die to cut out the center. Now when you position your oval die, make sure that you um, position it so that way you get the wording that you want. I wanted to at least uh, see some of that word Christmas, um, so I made sure that my die was a little bit lower. And I also uh, always keep a sponge that has some uh, walnut stain. Walnut stain is something that I can easily just uh, dab up the corners with, but walnut stain is a really deep dark um, color. So I have a sponge that just has some um, remnants of the walnut stain, and I use that, um, have it right by my side, and I grab it when I'm edging up my corners just to take away some of that white. And that little sponge is just a makeup sponge. Um, I, like I said, I just keep it right by my side. Um, I don't even have the ink out. I just use the ink that's on the sponge. And then if it gets too light, then I'll just add a little bit more and keep it right there by my side. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and mat um, my card uh, because my paper that I printed out on was a little bit light um, and that was intentional because I knew I was gonna mat it. And then that brownish, uh, cardstock that you see isn't really cardstock it's the back of one of Tim Holtz's packages um, so don't ever throw away your packaging a lot of the manufacturers these days will create beautiful packaging um, that you can use for your designs so make sure that you are paying attention to your packaging and don't be so quick to throw it away all right so using my um, printouts um, I went ahead and I trimmed down my photo and it fit perfectly in my oval and then from here, you're gonna have to make a decision. Now you're gonna want to decide if this is gonna be a picture that you're gonna slide in um, and you want someone to be able to pull it out or if it's just a vintage photo. 
So if you want someone to be able to slip it in and slip it out, you're going to want to keep the top of your frame open. So as you saw, I didn't um, add tape to the top because I want to be able to slide my photo um, in and out. Um, but this particular one is a scanned image. I have several images. So um, I just wanted to be able to demonstrate that to you that you can create these where you can slide the photo in and out. Um, but if you don't need to do that, then you're going to want to go ahead and adhere um, all four sides to make sure that your paper is secure. Okay, so once you have your photo inside of your frame, um, using some of your designer paper, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just adhere it down. Um, now on these cards, I, I like heavy quality cards. I don't like flimsy cards, so I tend to layer uh, quite a bit. And I also like the look of layering. Um, so that's an easy way to add some substance to your cards. So once I had my paper I uh, picked out, um, I went ahead and again, I adhered it to my uh, designer paper. And now I was ready to go ahead and embellish it. Now these um, clipping stickers are great. Um, they're metallic, they're the metallic ones and they come in black and white. And the black ones look awesome on these cards. It really does finish it off. Um, so on all uh, the cards that I'm creating, I think except for one, I use these metallic stickers and they have some great sentiments. There's so many to choose from and it's a pretty good price point. It's not very expensive. Um, these stickers I actually have from last year um, and so they do go a long way. All right, so that's the first card. Um, the second card I wanted to show you is using these little cabinet cards. Um, now, I took out the original photo because I'm definitely not giving away my original photos, um, but I am going to go ahead and demonstrate this uh, for you using one of my principles. Now, this image here is close to my heart. This is an image of my mother-in-law with her siblings, and unfortunately, I didn't come up with these ideas until after she passed away. I would have loved to have given her a Christmas card with her and her siblings, um, but unfortunately she had passed by the time I came up with some of these ideas. Uh, but I did use this design a couple years ago and I sent it to uh, my husband's aunts um, and uncles um, and they just loved it. Um, so it's a really great way to get some points, get some brownie points for your in-laws if you are using some of their photos. All right, so one thing I want to recommend is I did actually mat my, um, cardstock onto some black cardstock and when I used the Dynamics uh, die it went right to the edge so what I would say is don't do that necessarily you want to have enough edge so when you do use your die to create the inserts it's not going to go all the way to the edge which it did on my um, designer paper so just be cautious of that all right, so once you have your uh, slits, um, you are ready to go ahead and add your paper to your base. And then as you can see, the cabinet card easily fits into the card, which can be removed um, and will create a nice little keepsake. Now, if you're concerned about your cabinet card moving, because again, we're not adhering it, um, I wanna show you a little trick. Tim Holtz has some Christmas word chips that really work great as a little frame to hold your cabinet card. So again, if you are concerned about that cabinet card sliding down um, because the slits may not be as tight as you want, you can easily put a little uh, chipboard or word chip at the bottom and it'll be a nice little uh, base to hold your cabinet card. And again, once the person gets the Christmas card, they can enjoy it all Christmas long. And then at the end of the season, if they choose not to keep that Christmas card out, they can easily remove the cabinet card and it becomes a nice little keepsake. All right, so let me go ahead and show you card number three. Now card number three is one of my favorites because I love cabinet cards. I often go down to Cortez Street in uh, Prescott um, and I search the thrift stores as well as the antique shops for these wonderful cabinet cards. Um, they typically are about a dollar to two dollars a piece um, and if I find a great one with a great image I don't hesitate to pick it up. But you can create these cabinet card uh, keepsakes using your own photos and that's exactly what I did here. Uh, the photo that you see here is one that I dug out from our uh, family photos and well, I should say my husband's family photos because his family was great about keeping um, everything <laughs> from ephemera to pictures. So I have boxes and boxes of, of old photos um, and I'm just starting to go through them and sort them out by occasion. And these are the three Christmas ones that I found. So I was really excited to be able to showcase those and use them for my cards. And so I scan them in and I clean them up with my photos, Photoshop element 
uh, program. And now I'm going to create a fun little cabinet card for you. So the cabinet cards um, that I'm using, um, they're all different types of frames. And I actually did create a principal in my Etsy shop. Um, so if you don't have any of these wonderful old vintage photos, you can easily download mine um, from my shop. So I will link, leave links for those as well. Now I decided after I had matted my black card stock that I wanted to pop up my picture just a bit. Um, so I am using some foam tape um, and then I'm gonna adhere it to my black card stock. And then again, you see these metallic uh, stickers that I'm gonna be adding to my um, cabinet card. Now the cabinet cards that I did add in my Etsy shop, some of them have the name of the uh, photographer on the bottom of the cabinet card, but there's a couple of them that are blank and this pink one um, was blank. So it's a perfect place to add a little sticky uh, sentiment or you could even add a word ship if you chose to do that. But there's plenty of room to add some sort of sentiment. And then finally, I am I'm adding my black layer to just have the background pop just a bit more. Now, another way that you can um, create um, more uh, embellishments for your vintage cards is of course to add some vintage lace um, or buttons those always are great additions to your cards and they don't add too much bulk the buttons of course will be a little bit more bulkier um, but if you just add some vintage lace um, it makes it for a flat card um, so keep in mind if you are adding elements that are going to make a thicker card that will cost you more postage and typically we don't like to have really bulky cards over the holidays because we are sending out so many all right, so this pretty much concludes my uh, Christmas video uh, showing you how to create some keepsake Christmas cards. As always, I will leave a list of all the products that I've used to create the cards along with the links to the stores. If you've enjoyed the video, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget, I will have some of these wonderful vintage photos in my Etsy shop, so be sure to check out the links to those as well. If you haven't subscribed to my uh, channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out. And hopefully I'll be back in a few days with another Christmas video. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you again next time.